In this tutorial, I'll be showing you on how you can host a speed networking event using Zoom. First, I will be covering on what you'll need as the setup for the event. And then I will cover on how you would be able to execute and manage your event successfully. Now, apart from Zoom, you're also going to need an online word processor. The one I am using is called uh, Google Docs and it's accessible at drive.google.com. In Google Drive, what you'll need to do is click on new and then select Google Docs which will let you create a new document. And here what you'll need to do is click on insert table and then create a five by five table. So it should have five rows and five columns. You can add a name field on top of the sheet and then update the title of the document as well. So let's call it uh, speed networking. And here in the boxes, uh, you'll need to write interesting questions depending on the theme of the event. So let's say if it's uh, an event where you want to make new friends, you can put questions like, uh, uh, been to Europe, um, and then let's say you can have, uh, has a dog, um, has two or more siblings, and so on. So what I've done here is I filled all the boxes with some random questions that I could think of. Now, some of the questions might not be appropriate, maybe uh, depending on the type of event you're hosting. Uh, let's say if it's a professional event, you might want to have different questions. Now I'm going to create some more space for the boxes. So just press enter a couple of times. And there we go. The last thing here to do would be to remove the privacy on the document since we would be sharing this document with other people. And once you have done that, you should be able to see that the document is now public on the web or you might want to limit it to the organization if you're in a business setting. You will need to enable breakout rooms as a feature on your Zoom account. So you can do that by logging into zoom.us portal and then once you do that go under settings and look for breakout room so this needs to be ticked on and then you can also enable this feature to assign participants to breakout rooms when scheduling with all the configuration done it's time to show you guys on how the event will run so everyone as the participant will have access to the icebreaker sheet and you can share the link with them in the meeting so in my case, I've done it like that, that I just paste the link multiple times, or you can actually send the link to them in advance as well through email or messenger. Now, once they have access to the link of the document, they can make a copy and how they can do it is by clicking on file and click make a copy and add a name to the document, which will create their own copy for them that they can edit. Now, once everyone has their own copies, what you'll need to do is uh, set up breakout rooms. And what I recommend is you to have like three to four people per room max. Uh, the minimum you can have is two people per room. And it really depends on how many people you have in the event. So let's say if you have 50 people, it's usually good to have maybe four people per room. Otherwise, it, it can become really difficult to manage uh, if you have, let's say, 50 rooms. Now you can do the breakout room feature in Zoom by going to your meeting and clicking on more and you will be able to see this breakout rooms feature and it will split it evenly. So let's say if you have uh, 12 participants and six breakout rooms, it will be two participants per room and it will give you an estimate at the bottom. Right now I don't have any participants in the meeting but it will be two participants per room. If you have odd number of people, maybe it will say that it's gonna be two to three participants per room. Once the participants are in the breakout rooms, they can start asking each other questions that are laid already in the boxes. So let's say if uh, I am paired with someone called Jack and I'll ask him a question. Hey Jack, have you been to Europe? And let's say the person says, yes, they have been to Europe. I'll put down their name on my sheet. And then we can actually have some kind of conversation there 
on why he went to Europe or let's say if he lived in Europe what was the story behind that as well and then Jack can ask me the question back if I have been to Europe and what's my story and then we can move on to the next box so let's say if Jack has a dog or let's say if they don't have a dog then I just like move on to the next box the idea here is to fill out as many boxes as you can as possible and also uh, you want to ask people different questions because you just don't want to have the same question all the times. So what I usually lay out in the sheet is to have three names maximum per block. And that kind of limits questions or conversations around the same box because usually people start out with the first box and they keep on repeating that and never get to go through all the questions in all the boxes. As the host of the event, you would be doing rotations every 10 to 15 minutes and you'll have to do that manually. So let's say if I go back to my Zoom meeting, I'll have to click on, on breakout rooms and I have six breakout rooms where I will assign all the participants. And then as soon as I click on open all rooms, everyone will be able to join those separate meeting rooms. And here I can actually manage. So in my case, I don't have any participants to show you guys, but let's say if jack is in room one i can actually move him to room two and so forth like at, like the additional participant in room two i'll move them to room three and so forth so that everyone gets to meet everyone in the meeting now once you have done enough rotations or let's say you're past the allocated time for the event you can click on close all rooms uh, which will give a 60 second notice to the participants to leave the rooms and then they can come back to the main meeting room. And here you can either go on with your, let's say if you have some kind of game night, or you can just conclude that the event has finished. Thank you for joining. It's good to keep a track of the participants in the breakout rooms as well. Um, because let's say if one of the participants leaves, you just don't want the participant to be waiting all alone in that uh, meeting room. So I would suggest you guys to have like three participants uh, in case it's a bigger event as, as a minimum. You can also join different meeting rooms just to ensure that everyone is having a good time. Sometimes people have issues and that's a good way to know and get feedback for it. I hope you guys found this video useful. If you do have any kind of ideas to improve further uh, the speed networking events, do let me know through comments. Goodbye.